Um, but I'll just start by talking a little bit about what we're doing in Unison and why we're doing it. Um, we took a decision as a trade union a few years ago to look at how we approach organising um, and every aspect of organising, uh, which we've been doing for quite a few years, like I know your union's been doing the same thing, um, and see whether it's actually working. Have a look at it, see what's working, what's not working, and also what do we need to, what else do we need to do in terms of organising. So we've, um, at the moment, we've, we employ around 300 um, organisers full-time, either um, on permanent contracts or fixed-term contracts across the country, whose overwhelming focus is officially is around organising in the workplace. That is going into a workplace, talking to people, um, finding out if there's issues, seeing whether they can organise a campaign around the issues, and hopefully that campaign will recruit people to the union. Um, in reality, a lot of what they do is actually go in and have recruitment stalls in the uh, entrance of the... You'll have seen them in hospitals, I'm sure, you know, some recruitment stalls with purple tablecloths on and nice little pull-up stands and loads of freebies and things like that. And Which is all great, actually, and it does work. It does work in terms of recruiting sheer numbers into the union, um, but in terms of building lasting, sustainable organisation, um, the question has to be asked, does it actually work? So... Within Unison, we formed a strategic organising unit, um, which is where I work, and it's our responsibility to have a look at how we actually organise to further our strategy um, and to further our goals, which are building the union and building the union's um, power politically as well. Um, and part of that, we've realised, has to be about looking at how we engage with the wider community, um, seeing where we're doing good stuff that's benefiting the agenda of the union and um, the wider sort of political context and also have a look at um, where stuff isn't working and have a look at stopping it and taking the lessons where it's worked and transplanting them over to where things haven't worked and trying to encourage other people to do it. Because we've also got the issue where there's quite a lot of people in unison, um, just like Ian said, are very suspicious of community organising and uh, engaging with the wider community. And I would say that on the whole, where we have done community engagement in the past, it's been very much around the first area that Ian identified, which is the ad hoc area. It's just, you know, um, I was not long ago, I was in Rotherham Hospital where the chief exec, um, as you may be aware, announced uh, something like 17 million quid's worth of cuts or something. Um, and so we went in, we immediately started bringing around all the community groups in Rotherham saying, hey, this, there's going to be massive cuts to the hospital, this affects you. You want to do something about it and loads of them were really interested in working with us and, and forming a quick campaign around it but but that's not really organizing it's campaigning um, so we're interested in looking at actually what is what do we mean by organizing um, how does it work um, and you know do we need to change our approach to it so we've come up with a sort of answer we think of uh, that organizing is about building relationships with people um, so you can work together around common goals um, it's as simple as that. So in terms of community organising, um, a lot of my job is about going out and talking to other organisations um, and encouraging other elements of our trade union to go out and talk to other organisations, um, find out what their issues are, what their interests are, get to know them, see whether there's ways in which we can help them um, with their issues and see if there's ways in which they can help us. And it's, this isn't necessarily about building big formal coalitions or alliances and having steering committees or things like that. It is purely about getting to know people, having a sort of relationship with them where we can go and have a cup of tea with them a couple of times a year and a chat and see what's coming up on the, on the radar for both organisations and see whether there's any way we can link things in and also see whether we can introduce each other to further organisations that we may have a relationship with and may be interested in bringing them into the sort of campaigning framework. So one area in which we've had quite a lot of um, success in doing that is around um, libraries. There's a national um, campaign called Speak Up for Libraries that you may have heard about. Um, and that was basically started by Unison and because we employ um, the vast majority of librarians and other library staff are members of Unison. Um, that was started by us and the Women's Institute. Now, the Women's Institute is an organisation that a lot of people in Unison wouldn't necessarily have thought of in terms of community organising because they see them as a conservative organisation of women in rural areas who make jam and cakes and things like that. Um, but actually, we're a union where 80% of our membership are women. Um, some of our members are members of Women's Institutes. And the Women's Institute actually have a whole list of campaigning objectives and priorities which actually are the same as ours. So they've got the, their campaign around libraries. 
Um, they're very interested in opposing maternity ward closures, which obviously we are as well. Um, they've done really good stuff around uh, the cuts to legal aid and the effects that's having on women. Um, really good stuff around domestic violence as well and domestic violence services. And th this is all stuff we care about. So actually it makes total sense for us to, to work together. And like I said, it might not be in terms of a formal campaign, but <coughs> certainly just in terms of sharing information, having inviting each other to each other's actions, um, and things like that, and also trying to encourage bilateral links at a local level. So encouraging local Unison branches or local women's networks within Unison to get in touch with the local WI, introduce themselves to them, and encourage local WIs to do the same with our branches as well. Get in touch with us, introduce yourselves, just have a chat, get to know each other, and see whether something can come out of that. So that's very much what we're interested in, um, in terms of uh, building the organisation's profile. Um, we also see that working with community organisations can really help us with our other object main objective, which is around the recruitment of um, members. Because we have to recruit around 150,000 people a year just for our membership to stay still. And with all the cuts that are happening in the public services, um, which is obviously where we're predominantly organised, it's a massive challenge for us. At the moment, we are pretty much actually managing to achieve that. We're not really declining much on a national level, but we know it's not sustainable. So we wanted to develop these relationships with other groups in the community to see how that can influence our recruitment. Um, I, we actually just did some research the other week which showed that we currently have members employed by 25,000 different employers across the country. That's not workplaces, that's employers. They range from the big hospitals to um, you know, a tiny little charity somewhere employing two people. So how do we actually get to, those sort of, to our own members? How do we get to potential members who work in those employers as well? And um, our work with, say, groups like the WI means we can get people invited to WI meetings to do a talk about Unison and what we do. And we might find there are five or six potential members of the organisation at a WI meeting. So that could be an opportunity for us to recruit them. So that's an, again, that's another key reason for us um, in terms of engaging with the wider community. I'll leave, it, I'll leave it at that and hopefully if you've got some questions we can have more of a chat about that at the end.